All right, today I'm going to be showing you how to use and install Tailwind on Angular. So let's just get started, right? So the first step is basically, you know, just Google Tailwind Angular. And then on the Tailwind page, you will just have the install guide, right? The reason I'm showing you this is because maybe in the future it might change, right? So this would be your uh, source of truth. Um, instead of me showing you exactly the steps, you should go here and install yourself, basically. So let's just follow these, right? So um, first step, just to create a new Angular project. So ng-new is like the command to create new Angular project, right? And then cd into it, basically like uh, go into the folder and then install these packages and then this one, right? So let's just do that. Okay, so I've already installed the, um, the project. So let's just focus on the project, right? So let's just do that. Okay, so I've already done the these two commands essentially. So let's um, copy this first one and then install it. Oh, sorry, I, wait, what? Okay. <laughs> Not sure why the first letter got cut off there. Okay, so that is done. And then this will install the necessary packages, right? And then dash D represents it's in a dev mode, right? So it's only for developing and then it's not going to be shipped into your production application, right? So that's what dash D means. And then if you look at the package.json file, then it all only installed in your dev dependencies, right? So here and here basically. All right, so next up is actually creating a config file. So let's just do that. And then after you run this command, it created a tailwind config.js file. So this is your tailwind configurations essentially. And then on the content, let's just replace these, right? So do that. And then this is just showing, hey, the HTML and TS file is gonna be, you know, uh, seeing the Angular, not Angular, the tailwind styles. So let's just listen to that, right? Okay, so that's it. And then the next step is copy this command and then move on to your styles.css file and then just copy that and save it. And then now you have to do ng-serve, right? So let's just do ng-serve. Okay, let's just say no. All right, so now we have the website, right? So let's just go on to localhost 4200. So this is your website and I think I'm zoomed in a little bit. So let's test if the Tailwind is installed, right? So you, you can test it by like this, just copy this command and then move it into your app component HTML and then select everything and just paste it, right? Essentially. Okay, and then we move here and then yeah, it does, it is working, right? So it is like, font is large, it is bolded and it is underlined. So, and then the, we have hello world, right? Okay, so this is how you install Tailwind on Angular. That's like the first step, right? Yay. Cool. Okay. So now move on. Let's move on to the tips and tricks of using um, uh, Tailwind on Angular, right? So first of all, I think this is like uh, not really specific to Angular, but you should install the Tailwind extension if you're using um, any sort of um, VS Code, right? So any sort of editor. So install this and then this will really help you to show what the style is doing. So for example, right? So let's hover over text 3 excel and then this is what it's doing. Let's hover over font bold. This is what it's doing, right? So this is really, really important to see. And also you can see all the uh, Tailwind styles. So for example, like font dash, right? These are all the Tailwind styles, right? This is available to you. Cool. So that's like the first tip. Um, and then the second tip is, um, I guess, uh, specific to Angular. So let's just move on to that. Uh, so the second tip is the, the whole reason we're using, you know, Tailwind is is to remove the CSS file, right? Essentially, so you can just basically remove every CSS file that you have um, until you're needed. But most of the time, you just don't need it. Sometimes you need it, but I would not, um, you know, make it an empty file. And then it's just much cleaner, right? And then since you um, deleted the CSS file, you can just delete this line. So this is specifying your uh, CSS file directory, right? So let's just delete that. Now you can save it and it just works, right? Um, and also like, if you wanna be really, really clean, right? This this spec file is your test file, right? If you don't do any tests, then you don't need it, right? So you can just delete that too. So this is no problem and it works. And essentially you have only like two files in your each component, right? So that it is much, much cleaner. And you can even make this into further like cleanness by deleting this HTML file and then putting it like inline HTML, right? So let's let's try that. And then I don't really like that, but sometimes people prefer that. So let's just do that. 
So instead of specifying your HTML, let's just delete that and then you can just write your HTML in here. So let's just cut, copy this and then put it here, right? And then save it. And then essentially we can delete the HTML file. So now you only have one file that does everything, right? You have your styling with CSS, you have your uh, template here. Yeah, so yeah, that's it pretty much. So this is just, you know, make your Angular project really, really clean with um, uh, Tailwind, right? So that's really cool. Okay, so that's your first tip. Uh, no, sorry, second tip. And then the uh, th uh, third tip is to, when generating a new component, right? So typically what we do is like ng generate component and then your component name, right? Let's just do the like home component. So let's just do that. Um, this will create like a folder and then four files, right? So we don't really need that, right? We don't need the CSL, we don't need the spec, and sometimes we don't, we don't need the HTML. So, or, I mean, from, from my experience, I like to have the HTML, so let's just keep the HTML. But um, you can actually skip this command. I mean, not skip, I guess. Uh, make it this further, so let's just do like contact component, right? So, and then you can do it like ng, g and c right so generate is like shortcut for g and then i'm oh, sorry g is for generate and then c is for component right and then you can create like a common contact component but now you can do uh, dash s dash s means there's no style file you just have like inline stylers right so i'm going to show you what inline means and also you can do like skip dash dash skip tests so if you do this then it skips the test files so now let's see the comp uh, contact folder, right? So now if you have the contact component, then it's just like that. Easy as that, right? So you have one file and then one file for HTML, one file for TS. Okay. So I mentioned that inline styling, right? So inline styling means that you just have like styles and then you have, you can put your styles here. So for example, like you can put like, oh, maybe H1 is font, font size is like, three rems or something like that. So it, it just works like, you know, whenever you have, whatever you have in your CSS, you can just put it here and then it just works, right? So that's the Angular tip essentially. Um, yeah, okay, so now, then now let's move on to the next tip. So for example, right, let's just work on the home component. So in a home component, um, let's try to make like every H1 into like this, right? So if I do um, the next H1, so let's just do like, h1 and then hello view right so let's just assume you have like one particular style and then make every h the same right so what you have is like you have this style and this style it's still totally different right so you want to make everything like this but you know whenever you copy paste these kinds of commands it just gets messy right it's just like you know really really um, you know, really hard to look at, right? And essentially you can combine these into like some sort of class and then just use that class essentially. So that's what CSS is for, so, right? So let's try to do that. And then this is really useful for like button styling, like label styling or something like that. Uh, also like these kinds of text styling is also considered good too. But yeah, let's just try to do that. So now we can do styles as like an inline styling, right? You can also create like a separate style file, but let's just do inline styling. Okay, so there are several, several ways. Um, what you can do is like do h1, and then essentially you just copy everything in here, right? So let's just copy this, copy that, but that's just a terrible way of doing it. But in, instead of doing h1, let's just create like a custom class and you know, say my um, heading or something like that. Okay, so now this, my heading, would be using your Tailwind classes, right? You don't want to put any CSS like that. So, so for example, like font um, weight, right? I think font weight 700 or 800 or something like that. You don't want to do that. You're just doing CSS, right? So there's just no point of using Tailwind at this point. So what you do is like put your Tailwind classes in here and then just put apply command in the front. So now you have all of your, um, Tailwind classes that is being applied to this class. So now you just use this class all the time. Let's just do that. Okay, let's just see what happens, right? So it's the same, so that's good. So let's just change the color, right? Color red or something like that. Oh, I think it's text red. 
Oh, it's not text right now. <laughs> I guess the only problem with uh, using this is that you don't have the autocomplete, right? So let's try text. Okay, red 500, I guess. Okay, red 500. Okay, now, yeah, it, it just applies to everyone, right? So then now this is the neat part. And yeah. All right, so I will, you know, I'll be using these apply commands in here or maybe in other command, but also what you can do is put this into like your global styles, right? So you, you can put it in here and then you can use this in everywhere in your uh, project, right? So I would not recommend this unless you're using this everywhere, but you know, there are some cases you use this, but yeah, so you can just put it in the component level. Cool, All right, so that's the, that's the tip. And then, um, yeah, let, uh, let's move on to the next tip. So tip number five. Um, there are typically like, you know, this is not particularly angular, um, tip, but it's, it's, it's like tailwind general tip. So, um, there are concepts of containers, right? So container tailwind. So essentially what you have is, um, you want to make your view responsive as possible, right? So what, what I mean is like, okay, so on large screen, we have that, and then if I extend it, the text is just on the left, right? Typically, when you whenever you see websites, you see like a lot of like padding, and then you see white spaces on the left and right. And then you whenever you see small screens, you don't see that white space on the left and right, right? So that's what I mean by responsive like um, body, I guess, responsive body or responsive container. That's what we call. It. So if you guys used um, Bootstrap before, like that's like container class as well, right? So let's just do the container class. And essentially, if you Google um, container tailwind, you just come across this page. So you can just copy here and then put it in the, the under the theme. You can you can leave this extend um, empty. That's fine. And then just put it like that. And then whenever you change to uh, make changes to the config file, you have to restart it. It doesn't automatically catch up. So let's just do that. All right, cool. So now you know it doesn't change anything because I didn't put it inside a container, right? So now I would have to put this inside then class container and I can just move everything up one step and then now it's, it's working right so if I you know make this smaller right the padding is like really really small but if I make it bigger the padding is really big right so sometimes this is not even enough you can even change this right so um, just go to tailwind and then make this maybe um, you know and then make this into 14 or something. Yeah, so now this is like maximum. Yeah, it just works like that. So this is like a responsive website, right? So the, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and that default is like the smallest, smallest like that. And then uh, these like breakpoints, right? SM, LG, XL, you can find these on Tailwind website. Tailwind breakpoints, right? Customizing screens. Oh, guys, no, this is not it. Responsive design. <clears throat> So these are your breakpoints, right? So essentially like uh, 6 of 40 or below is considered small. So that's um, that's the um, maximum that I have for one REM, right? So you can just do these, use these. And if you want to customize it, you can customize it by like these customizing screens, right? So put it screens and then just override it with this and then it will just uh, work, right? So that's perfectly fine. But you know you can just stick with tailwinds, but it's default, and then if you want to change it, change it later, right? It doesn't really matter at this point. Um, okay, so that's uh, about it for the tip number five, and then tip number six. So this is going to be my final tip. And uh, the thing is that whenever you use tailwind, it's really really cumbersome to just put a lot of styling right into your like class. If you want to create like a button, you should just put lots and lots of styles and then you just keep writing and then it will just overflow and then it looks ugly, right? And to mitigate that, you essentially use apply and then that work, works great. But, you know, you don't want to be creating component from scratch, right? So that's why there's a thing called Daisy UI. So Daisy UI is essentially like a wrapper around Tailwind, right? So it uses Tailwind and then it already has a custom component. So let's just try to use that, right? So, um, Let's install Daisy UI by like this command. So essentially you just do um, Daisy UI install, right? And then it gives you this page and then install. Okay, it's also already installing and development. Okay, that's great. And then you just put plugins as required Daisy UI. So go to config and then like that, easy. 
I'm, I'm not sure if they catch on caught up, but let's see. Um, let's just test it, right? Uh, I would have, to, I might have to um, restart it. Let's just try PTN. Click. Okay, yeah, it did work. Okay, cool. Now, so if you just do regular button, right? It doesn't do anything, right? So it has no styling like that. But if we do PTN, it's now it's styled because it's using Daisy UI's styling. So let's go to buttons and then the regular button is like that, right? So this is using that. So if you want to use uh, like neutral or whatever, like secondary button, just go to the HTML and then you can see the classes, right? So PTN, PTN accent, let's just try that. Yeah, so we have the accent. And then also, I mean, these accent and primary colors depend on your theme. You can customize the theme, blah, blah, blah. There's going to be, I mean, if I want to talk about Daisy UI, there should be another separate video for that. But essentially, like, you know, this is the starting point if you want to use Tailwind. And then I would highly suggest something like this, you know. I mean, even Tailwind has its own component library, right? But I think it's expensive. You have to pay for it or something, you know, pricing, blah, blah, blah. So... But Daisy UI is free, and I really like it. I use it on my projects, and it's really it works really well. So, I would highly recommend it. And you can just browse through these components, and then you know, um, use them whatever you like. That's it. All right. Uh, that would be all for this uh, video. And then uh, yeah, if you have any questions, then let me know. And uh, talk to you later.